Well, this is Kathleen and Gay Hendricks who say that being in the limelight can make an already awkward thing like dating even more difficult. Their new book is called The Conscious Heart, Conscious Heart. And they say that getting involved in what you just mentioned, charity work or social action can often make the whole process of looking for love easier. What do you mean by that? Well, we think that uh, you guys have put your finger right on the central problem that we all face, and that is, can I be myself and still be in a relationship? So that when you show up, people are looking at the filter, and they see that first rather than seeing you. We live down in Santa Barbara and see a lot of celebrity couples down there, and it's a problem that everybody's got, whether they're out there on the big screen or at home, which is... Will you love me once you get to know the real me? Or will you love me when the game is over? Yeah, and that's why we want to invite the football players and everybody to build a bigger game, which is a game of how much can I contribute to the community, because we think that too many couples eat up yeah. their energy in power struggles and arguments and that kind of thing, whereas what they need to be doing is rechanneling that energy out into the community and making some contributions out there so that when the, the football game may end or the game of being in a movie may end, but then the big game really begins. Well, isn't that difficult for most couples? Now, I may not be difficult for it because really, uh, you know, having money, the luxury of money gives you the opportunity to think about things differently. If you're a couple, for example, and you're just kind of struggling, like most people are, to make ends meet, you got to get the, the food bill paid, you got to get the electricity bill paid. Do you have the time and the energy to channel yourself outward someplace else other than let's we we got to get this house working we think that the energy that people waste in conflict and power struggles could solve all the problems in the world in fact we often ask people if you weren't involved in this power struggle trying to decide who's in control who's controlling the money supply or who's going to pick up the kids this week that that energy could be used for any kind of vision that you've got it could be used yeah. we've had people who've put together child care centers so that in their own neighborhoods so that they can share those responsibilities and getting involved with the things that they really love to do once they're not looking at who's going to be right here. Also, a lot of people don't... Yeah, well, but I just have to question this, this point that you're making because I think most couples, and always are, in, in some, involved in some kind of power struggle, only they are not conscious that they are. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And that's exactly the problem because yeah. we found also that sometimes the power struggle itself will just flat disappear when people start mm -hmm. making some kind of a contribution to their church. Extending their themselves. Yeah, when, yeah. They, when they take their focus off and put it on the larger community rather than what's in it for me, what can I contribute, people find that very attractive. And I think even people just meeting somebody brand new, when they get a sense of what really moves you in your heart, that's very attractive. Yeah. are so interesting to me. Gay and Kathleen Hendricks. They are marriage counselors. They, are also, uh, they also wrote this book called The Ten Second Miracle. Can't wait. Welcome. Now, hang on. The Ten Second Miracle, like cure for cheating? Well, that's in fact what it's all about. Every cure takes 10 seconds or less. I, I, come on. Okay, what Hillary Clinton has to do, for example, is she has to first let herself feel colossally angry, but that's really only gonna take her a little while. But More than 10 seconds, I think, for what's <laughs> yeah. allegedly going on. Yeah. Actually, I could be takes, stewing for decades on that one. What takes more than 10 seconds is avoiding your feelings. If she would let herself feel angry, genuinely feel angry, then that can lead her to asking the only question that she really needs to ask. And that is, what do I need to learn to keep this from happening again? See, nothing is ever solved by people trying to decide whose fault it is, like is it his fault or her fault? Because when this kind of thing happens, both people are involved. In fact, we had a couple, our all-time record couple, that when they came in, they were very depressed. And when we looked into what was going on, they had had 26 <laughs> separate affairs. Oh, my Between God. the two of them. She had oh. had 14, and he had had 12. Well, she that's was... not a marriage, then. That's a joke, well, isn't no, it? Well, that is They hadn't ever had a marriage. That's... They'd had... A, a so you -ha -ha can, and you gave them 10 seconds and they seconds? were done? You know what? <laughs> it was... <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, did you fix it? Yeah, come did on. Did you fix it? Uh, <laughs> Right. We heal in 10 seconds, but we charge by the hour. <laughs>
down here, they're really entrusting us with the um, deepest part of their lives. See, the people who come to us, their relationships aren't working. Gay Hendricks and his wife, Kathleen, are marital therapists. We, we focus on what will allow you to design the relationship that you really want. And they have a new fix for relationships that are going sour. Even if there have been lies, even if there have been acts of deception. You might not want to hear it, a lot of us wouldn't, because their solution is telling the truth to each other about everything, all the time. We say, when in doubt, tell the truth. Yes. Uh, if you have any doubt about whether you ought to share it, by all means, don't keep that one private. Let, let that one out. That means letting it all out, no lies, not even those little white ones. If I'm thinking, oh boy, what a bad haircut, and I don't share that with him, then I'm basically, I've cut myself off from the relationship. You know what almost every person watching at home is silently thinking <laughs> to himself. If I tell her everything, she'll clobber me. Yes. We all fear the other person's reaction. Yes. But what we've seen here 1,500 times anyway is that the reaction is no big deal. It, it blows through like a thunderstorm yeah. and then people get better and get healthier after that reaction. The Hendricks call it telling the microscopic truth. And uh, that's the fastest way to intimacy, we think, is to say something that real to another person. This might not be in the same, I may be out in left field on this, but let me throw this at you with truth. She says, I got a new coat today, how do you think this looks? Okay. Good. And I say... This has actually happened uh, with us. Okay, so. really? Oh, I want to hear your answer. <laughs> so, so the, but with us it was, I put something on in, and, uh, and I said, how does this make me look? And you said, well... As I recall, it makes you look fat. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes. right. and? and I said, oh, well, first I was very hurt. Well, okay. And then I recognized that I was really hurt, that this made me look fat. But then I realized that my commitment was to really hearing the truth. And I'd rather know that something wasn't looking attractive than to not know and to be walking around in an image and have him thinking that I looked fat and not saying it. But, 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 <laughs> do you need his approval? How about your own? How about your own identity? You bought this, you put it on, you thought you looked good. He destroyed it. You let him destroy all that. Well, see, my... Didn't he? No, he didn't. Oh, he did Because my, my... I wouldn't have asked him if I didn't really want to know his opinion. Okay. There are some times, and you say in the book, that we give power to other people mm -hmm. that we shouldn't do. Yeah. We, we become so uh, enamored of their approval that we give up things that we should be keeping to ourselves. In other words, you talk about the couples who, when he says, what would you like to do, she says, well, gee, it doesn't matter because she has not used to having what she says matter. Mm -hmm. So what does that woman do? We, we think that's an essential skill, yeah. particularly mm -hmm. for women to learn. And there are two parts to it that are really important. The first one is how I feel. And the second one is what I want. And you're speaking, Mary, to the second part that most of us have not had any experience in really knowing what we want. We're very adept at knowing what the other person wants, knowing what's going to get us approval, knowing what's going to look good. And so we really recommend that people practice saying, this is how I feel and this is what I want. So I began to use it with my clients and with my very first patient that I uh, worked with, she came in feeling very afraid and I did 15 minutes of conscious breathing with her and she looked radiant when she walked out the door. And I'd never seen talk therapy work that fast before, so it really impressed me. Relationship, and what But I should there be that much honesty? Yes. Yes, if you have a relationship, you tell the truth. If you don't tell the truth, you have an entanglement. And what, what are some of the signs of a liar? Uh, the biggest one probably is, imagine, uh, Sally, if I left your uh, house after a dinner party and you said, did you have a good time? And I said, oh, yes, it was the absolute best time I had all winter long. It was, uh, so uh, body language is probably number one. Uh, number two is verbal intonation, like some kind of a sound of the voice that lets you know the person is lying. Like uh, we're going to see uh, Tanya Harding in a little while. And I'll yeah, point well, out no, let's some... look at that okay. now. We've heard stories regarding public figures, and we all wondered, were they really innocent? You're going to give us some insight. Now, this is a tape, Doctor. We have a tape of Tanya Harding. I want everyone to look at the tape. I had no prior knowledge of the planned assault on Nancy Kerrigan. Uh, 
we learned that we really like the truth better. And See? it took some testing because we, we took the first couple of years of our relationship to map out the things that we write about in the book. But we don't lie to each other anymore. Periodically, Dear Abby or Ann Landers, I forget which, uh, is asked <laughs> the question, probably both, uh, since they're twin sisters, you know, I've had an affair, should I tell my spouse? And their counsel, one of their counsel at least is, uh, no, you've, you've made a mistake. <laughs> Why hurt the feelings of somebody you love by, in, in effect, compounding the mm -hmm. error? Don't do it again. And maybe to add something from your philosophy, from your very good book, uh, you would just look inside yourself. Why did you need to have an affair? Mm -hmm. But 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 she What's says really don't. Say but that. you had it. Do you have to dump it on them now? So when you don't tell the truth about having an affair, it's like pretending that you don't have a gorilla in the backyard. So if you <laughs> if you don't tell the truth about it, it builds up and you get more and more distance with your partner, the moment you tell the truth, you can have intimacy again, even about an affair. Well, one of the things that we have had uh, a hard time learning to tell the truth to each other about is if, uh, for example, I'm sexually attracted to another woman. Um, I would withhold that early in our relationship, but now I just say it. I You're say, kidding. You what? walk down the street gay and you say, ooh, look at what a babe. Huh? <laughs> no. no. I usually and, say, and it's all right with... I, I, well, actually, I, I usually know it before he says it. I and think he, women know these things. Oh, so you say we, you're thinking that's a babe. Aren't you gay? <laughs> well, sometimes I'll say that because uh -huh. we have such a level of communication now over years of telling the truth that I can tell what's going on. But he, I can really trust that gay's always going to tell me the truth. And so his saying, I was attracted to somebody, then redirects that energy so that we can share it rather than it going out to somebody else and me suspecting about it. Most human communications can be cleared up in 10 minutes if people are heart to heart with each other. Yeah.